Hello and welcome to another video. I promise you this is a quadratic equation. It doesn't look like a quadratic equation. Maybe it looks like a quadratic equation. But you have to look closely and see that if you look at this term, it is the square of this term. And in a quadratic equation, if you have x squared plus x plus something, which is a constant, equals zero, you would easily say that's a quadratic equation. So just imagine if I wrote this as n squared minus 5n plus 4 equals zero, you would agree with me that it is a quadratic equation. Well, it is a quadratic equation because what if I said that my n was y to the two-thirds? Okay, so I know we've done all kinds of quadratic equations, but in this case, you have a quadratic equation in which the exponent is a fraction. So when you see that, what you want to pay attention to is, wait, is this twice, is this twice this? Because if it is twice it, it means you're raising it to a power. Watch this. So let's say, let n be equal to y to the 2 over 3. What will n squared be? Well, n squared is going to be y to the 2 thirds raised to power 2. And if you remember the laws of exponents, when the exponent, when an exponent is raised to another power, what you do is you just multiply the exponents. So this is going to be y to the 4 thirds. So this is the square of this. Therefore, this is a quadratic equation if only we replace y to the 2 thirds with n, and then this is going to be n squared minus 5n plus 4 equals 0. So that's the understanding you take into this. Now, if that's all you need to learn, I would say you can just solve this and get your answer. But there's still another trick that's coming on um, as we go on in the video. So let me get rid of this and start afresh, solve it, and show you something else you have to be careful of, otherwise you'll get the answer wrong. And in short, before you go, there are four answers to this question, not two, four answers. Okay, um, let's get into the video. Okay, so I'm gonna just solve it based on the explanation I gave. I'm gonna say, let n be equal to y to the two-thirds so that I can write this as n squared minus 5n plus 4 equals 0. Because I know how to factor quadratic equations, I'm going to factor this into n minus 4 and n minus 1 equals 0. Well, the zero product property says when you multiply two things together and you get a zero, it means one of them is a zero or both of them are zeros. That's the only way you're going to get a zero on this side. This must be zero or this must be zero. Or both of them are zeros. So that's what we use to solve this. And we go n minus four must be equal to zero or n minus one equals zero. So we get n equals four or n equals one. But we know that n is y to the two-thirds, so we do the replacement and say y to the two-thirds equals four, or y to the two-thirds is equal to one. Okay, remember, we are not looking for n, we're looking for y. Now let's go solve these very innocent looking equations, but they have a trick to it because you have to recognize that this itself is the square of something, and this is the square of something. Okay, now let's rewrite it. You see, let's start with the first one. Let's start with this one, the smaller number. So we have y to the two-thirds is equal to one. If you just want to be quick, what you will do, you say, hey, I'm gonna raise, I'm gonna invert this and say y equals three halves. Okay, y to the two-thirds, let's write it this way. So you're gonna, so you're gonna say, y to the two-thirds raised to power three-halves is equal to one to the three-halves. Okay, you raise this to that power. Well, 
this is going to get rid of this and you're going to get y is equal to 1 raised to power anything is 1. So you're going to say, hey, I am done. But you're not done, you're wrong. <laughs> because this gives you one solution. You're supposed to get two solutions because this y to the two-thirds is actually the square of y to the one-third. So every time you solve a square equation, you're supposed to get two answers, fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back here and fix this. We're going to rewrite this in a way that gives us a good answer. Let's get rid of this. So what should you do? I want you to rewrite this expression as if you were saying the cube root of y squared equals 1. See, this is the best way to write this so you don't miss out on some of the answers. So now that we have this, the cube root of y is equal to 1. I can take the square root of both sides, which tells me that the cube root of y will have to be plus or minus 1. So I can say that the cube root of y is equal to 1, or it, the cube root of y equals negative 1. So my y is going to be, if I cube both sides, it's going to be 1 cubed, it's going to be 1, okay? If I cube this, both sides, I'm going to get rid of this cube root sign, and the cube of negative 1 is negative 1. So I have two answers, y equals 1, or y equals negative 1. Those are the two possible answers using y, the solution. So now let's go back and do the same thing for this. Now that I've explained the idea behind it, now you see that we could actually solve for this one. We could say that y to the 2 thirds is equal to 4. We can write this as the cube root, or instead of writing the cube root symbol, I could write y to the 1 third squared is equal to 4. I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to have y equals 1, right to the 1 third is equal to plus or minus 2, which is the square root of this plus or minus square root of 4. So I have y to the 1 third equals plus or minus 2, so y to the 1 third is equal to 2, or y to the 1 third equals negative 2. And I can take the cube of both sides. If I cube both sides, I'm going to have y equals 2 cubed or y equals negative 2 cubed. And that gives me y equals 8 or negative 8. So as you can see, because the, ex the highest exponent in this equation was 4, we had to get 4 answers. Sometimes they're not all real, but fortunately we had real solutions in this case. Sometimes you don't get real solutions for all four of them, but you have to get four solutions. Unless the question specifically says you should only choose the real ones. And even so, you still have to get four solutions. Say that y will be equal to, let's start from the smallest number, will be negative 8, negative 1, 1, and 8. These are the four possible values of y that will make this equation true. I hope you learned something because if you did, you got to leave a comment in the comment section and you got to give this video a thumbs up and be subscribed if you're not. Don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.